anything I say, I have documentary evidence for. I, I can't bring it all here. I, I've used 1,700 papers to compile this um, and my last talk. But you're welcome to come and look at them and criticise them and say, can I have a copy of this uh, and take it away for whatever you want to take it away for. But I don't say a single word unless I have documentary evidence. Now, my aim is not to upset anybody, but some of the things I say, you know, uh, can. Between 1949 and 1962, everything we needed to know about microwaves was known and published. By 1962, all of the dangers, all of the hazards, Everything was known. And when I say all of them, the, between the superpowers and us, the brain at that time had been studied for brain waves and microwaves could be used to penetrate the brain and cause behavioral changes. And by 1962, with the uh, resonance frequencies of the organs and the brain, the cyclotronic resonance frequencies, circadian resonance frequencies, a statement was made in 1962 by the governments that birth defects, all birth defects, organs, whole organisms, all cells, brain function, all emotions, all moods could be altered, changed and destroyed by 1962. Microwaves then, as now, were used as stealth weapons before they became cell phones. <clears throat> In 1965, the use of cell phones uh, by the military was uh, used. I had them. By 1965, the prospect of cell phones and everything from cell phones was seen as a really, really lucrative uh, market for the general public. And Knowing the dangers that cell phones could cause, the military are exempt. You, you do not have, in the military, when you sign, uh, any danger that comes your way for using whatever, that's it. Uh, you don't have any recourse for that. But the general populations do. <clears throat> and the military and the industry of several countries, the United States, Canada, us, some of the NATO countries, Australia and New Zealand, the people got together and they knew that cell phones and all the other gadgets you have today, they knew they would not be allowed under the current safety limits. And we needed a safety limit that could never be taken to court and never challenged if these things were to progress. And in 1965, they adopted an old 1953 thermal level uh, by an engineer by the name of Schwann. And in order to prevent being taken to court, the industries and the people who make the decisions, they adopted the Schwann 1953 level, 
which basically says if a certain weight of your tissue, either 10 grams or a kilogram, depending which way you are going, does not heat up by a certain temperature in six minutes, then everything will be deemed safe for a lifetime's exposure for adults, women, children, pregnant women, everybody. And the six minute thermal level is the one that is still used today. They totally ignored and put aside the electric and magnetic vectors of the wave and the harm that the electric and magnetic vectors can do. Oh, it's my stick, it's all right. Um, sorry. Um, thank you very much, thanks. Uh, they put aside all of the harm from the electric and magnetic vectors, so I don't knock it over again. Uh, now, they interfere with the electrical conductivity of the cells, the electrical conductivity of the neurons, the electrical conductivity of the brain. They interfere with the resonant frequency of the circadian resonant cells, the cyclotronic ions, in fact they interfere with everything. So all of those were brushed aside <clears throat> and we stuck with the six minute thermal limit. Sometimes they expend, extend it to 30 minutes, but basically it is a six minute and that is what is in force today in 42% of the planet of what we are in that part today. So you have really no protection against the electric and magnetic vectors. And as I say, that is in force today. That comes from the International Commission for Non-Ionising Radiation Protection, who advise our what was the government scientists, now Public Health England, uh, who advise governments, who advise councils, and it comes all the way down, and it is still in force today. <clears throat> I will be coming on to 5G later. Um, 5G uh, is not new. 5G was causing a nuisance in 1972. The only thing new about 5G is its name, fifth generation, that's it. That is the only thing new. Uh, it is well documented, there are many research papers on it. And finally, in 1972, sorry, in 1971, uh, cancer was proven to be uh, caused by low-level microwave radiation and has been kept secret ever since, along with all of the other illnesses and diseases. In the early 70s, this document was published. It was by the American military by the American military, it is top secret, classified top secret. And it lists 2,000 research papers, 2,000, and each of those took many, many years to construct. 2,000 research papers, because in those days the military did the research with the universities. And it covers all of the illnesses which you can expect to get and die from, from continuous low-level radiation. This, I think, is the most shameful document ever to be published. It is by the World Health Organization. We pay them to protect us and we trust them to protect us. In 1973, 
the World Health Organization had a conference in Warsaw, Biological Effects and Health Hazards of Microwave Radiation Below Thermal Radiation, which is what you have on your cell phones. 350 pages documenting harm to the ordinary person. 107 different chapters. Chapter 40 deals with cancer. Uh, I think 28 reproductive faults. But instead of telling the world, I don't know who made them make the decision, instead of telling the world, it was stamped top secret with a big red top secret stamp. It still is. And you still will not be told about this. They will not admit to it, even today. The second most shameful document, I think, is this one. This was published between 1972 and 1976. The final part was 1976. It is from the US Defense Intelligence Agency. And the document says, <clears throat> if the more advanced nations of the West, which is us, are strict in the enforcement of exposure standards, there could be unfavorable effects on industrial output, industrial output is profit, and military function. In other words, what they wanted us to do was set a level of radiation for the NATO countries, set a, a level of radiation that would not be strict. <clears throat> Hence, we came in with the six-minute thermal level that is still in place today and what councils are advised to adhere to. <clears throat> At that time, the World Health Organization, again, what they didn't tell you, so <clears throat> on their websites or on their, what they had on these days, 80% of the published papers linked cancer to low level microwaves. And the others, you had neurological damage, birth defects. Uh, there, there was no secret among the decision makers then. And every so often, when a, generally when a new G comes out, a new, uh, one of the new makes of the cell phone, <clears throat> The International Commission for Non-Ionising Radiation Protection, they put out an addendum to their original report, <coughs> which clears the way for whichever generation it is coming out. There's a new one coming out in a couple of days to clear the way for 5G. This is the original or a copy of the original uh, International Commission document. And it, it is of interest to decision makers, all decision makers, excuse me, <clears throat> because I think I'm not legally trained and I cannot understand people when they talk to me who are legally trained. But I will give you my interpretation of this. <clears throat> and this is for council decision makers and all other decision makers. They actually say in this that their recommendations are guidelines, they are not law. 
You do not have to adhere to them. They are guidelines. <clears throat> they say they only consider involving the heating of tissue. They go on to say, for example, children, the elderly, and some chronically ill people may have a lower tolerance for one or more forms of these microwaves than the rest of the population. They will be deemed sensitive. And then they say on page 547 of this one, in practice, the critical steps in applying these general procedures may differ across the spectrum. Several steps in these procedures require scientific judgment. For example, on reviewing the scientific literature and determining an appropriate reduction factor. In other words, in my simple brain, if you are told that something is dangerous as a decision maker, you have the authority to say, this says this level will cause this. I am instructed to reduce the level to a point that is deemed safe. You do not have somebody walk into your school or somewhere and say, sign here, Gov, these are radio waves. We've had radio for 100 years, no problems. And then, zonk, there's a transmitter, and you come back a week later, and like Lego, some other people have gone, dong, 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 dong. And you've just a mass of things that you don't understand, and nobody will tell you what they are anyway. <clears throat> now... I brought a couple of books along, not because I get any money if they're sold or anything like that, <clears throat> but al along with the whistleblowers, of which I am one, um, I have known for many, 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 many years a captain who is an electronics warfare specialist captain. He worked with the Canadian military, government, and CIA. And he published a book. <clears throat> uh, and in this book, and I can give you the title, and he's updated it. The, this is the original. He's updated it for 5G. And in it, <clears throat> whereas Snowden, uh, the whistleblower a few years ago, put everything on the internet... He has put all of the top secret papers into a book, given the websites where you can download them if you are a decision maker and you want proof of something. <clears throat> he includes our government, the International Commission, uh, and he's put them all in a book under different categories, everything to do with cell phones, Wi-Fi, 5G, government, and all that. But the reason I want to quote this one is because he has quoted that before this bubble bursts uh, with children and everybody running around with everything stuck to the sides of their heads, it is expected and anticipated there will be two billion deaths. Now, I questioned that in my own mind and I thought, that's a lot. And in my simple Janet and John brain, I couldn't work out what two billion deaths actually means. But it is, if you imagine everybody who died in World War II, it is 28 times that number. <laughs> and that's a lot. But when I started looking into this, I thought, well, I remember when I was teaching, and I remember the time in the early 80s when I said to my science class, and I said, 
we have just passed the 100,000 deaths a year rate in this country for smoking-related deaths. And then you start looking around the world for smoking. Smoking was linked to, they didn't know the name then, but they knew that you had left, uh, lung congestion and died with big black ugly bits um, in 1870. Smoking was linked to cancer and death in 1870. In 1939, all of the science was in place to have it stopped. Then the government scientists and industry scientists, who are sometimes one of the same person, step in and they delay things for 50, 60 years, which is what happened to smoking. Exactly the same with lead in petrol, uh, and there are many other examples. So when I looked at this and I thought, well, smoking is probably comparable to two billion by now. Lead in petrol certainly will be. Um, <clears throat> and I looked around a few figures and a 10-year international study around the world in various countries had many, many thousands of miscarriages, suicides, deaths around transmitters. Lima, near Peru, the country, is known as Cancer City, where it is unregulated. Just two provinces in India, they have 50,000 brain tumours in children and 100,000 plus dead in the provinces attributed to mobile phone masts. Um, and so it goes on. And when you start looking at examples like this, in a paper I wrote, and anyone can come out to my house and read it and copy it. In a paper I wrote, there was a survey done, uh, I'm trying to think, probably 15 years ago, um, of some of the schools in France and Spain, <clears throat> and they found 200 schools with cancer clusters of eight or more different types of cancers attributed to the transmitter in the playground. We had uh, one I was involved in, 11 children under 11 with leukemia after a transmitter went up, they all died. It was taken to Parliament. The MP put forward a very, very good case. It took 18 months to get to Parliament. And the MP, the minister, stood up and said, we are within international guidelines and sat down. And that was it. In fact, the minister lied. We're not within international guidelines. <clears throat> there are, and I, I'm not going to dwell on these, um, but I just, for the decision makers, <clears throat> I will just run through a couple of these. Um, there are already deaths. Come on, Barry, sort yourself out, man. What's the matter with you? <clears throat> there are already deaths from Wi Fi in class from here to New Zealand. There are 136 studies of harm in schools, proper studies from Wi-Fi and transmitters in schools. There are 48 studies on child suicide. It's going up around 4% every year. Um, <clears throat> I'll just stop there for a second. It is the, the pulses or modulations from the frequencies. Uh, Professor Mio, King Saad University, he has shown, especially in a child's brain where the, the tissue is particularly soft, the, the skull, <clears throat> he has shown that uh, 
the microwaves penetrate deep into all areas of a child's brain. And a scientist, Penifal, P-E-N-I-F-A-E-L, in 97, uh, he listed now a list of one to 600 pulse frequencies that could cause uh, neurological and physiological damage uh, in the body. In the paper I had there from the military, they list all of the symptoms that you can be warned about if you are taken to court. And the last one is severe neurological damage, including death. <coughs> so, uh, suicide is one of the common, the five most commonest from microwaves going into the brain and I'm not a neurosurgeon, I, I just know from experience, um, the five most commonists uh, in order are the same symptoms, the same symptoms that you would receive from morphine or marijuana, hunger, excessive hunger, aggression, and if the pulse frequency is a certain frequency, which I won't say on camera, um, it, the aggression manifests itself as uh, uh, aggressive, suicidal tendency, uh, sorry, uh, sexual aggression. <clears throat> so you can get aggressive from the microwaves and the particular pulse frequency will manifest itself as sexual aggression particularly from men. And uh, the, the last one is, um, I, I just, I'm not a medical doctor, um, I describe it as the same symptoms as lead arsenide poisoning, where you just want to go to bed and die, and if somebody came in with a bag and said, there's a million pound, go and spend it, uh, you, you wouldn't be bothered. Uh, you, those are the most commonest symptoms that you get from microwaves in the brain at varying degrees. And any neurologists here, I can run through the processes if you wish. Um, <clears throat> right, okay, here we go. <clears throat> Pregnant women are particularly vulnerable because the womb, of course, is mostly fluid and microwaves are attracted and stay in and rearrange the chemical structures of the fluid in many ways. There is a 20-fold higher concentration of damage within the womb. Uh, a paediatrician with a neurologist, a medical neurologist, went into a school. I don't know the size of the school, but he found 31 children with physical damage and neurological damage related to the transmitter. The World Health Organization published a paper that showed that a level of microwave irradiation for a pregnant woman can reach 47.7% as a miscarriage, stillbirth, or genetically damaged child rate. 47.7%. A paper published a few years ago, just a couple of years ago, by the uh, European Academy for Environmental Medicine, who are an incredibly talented bunch of doctors and clever people, they looked at their own research and came up with 48%. <clears throat> For school children, and I have taught pregnant school children and I've worked with pregnant teachers. Uh, for school children, you can add a risk factor 
of between 10 and 20% more, I don't know exactly, and I don't know anybody who does, due to the increased electrical conductivity in their bodies, <clears throat> the absence of a full working immune system that isn't really up and running till they're 18 or so, <clears throat> the absence of the hardness of the bones and the easiness of the microwaves to penetrate the bones, <clears throat> which are not really fully developed till they're around 27, the last being the clavicle. Uh, and of course in the bones you have the bone marrow, which helps with the immune system. So children are particularly vulnerable. Between 50, 40% and 60% vulnerable. Um, when I'm talking to governments or royalty or, or people like that abroad, <clears throat> um, the one question I say to them is, if you do nothing, and a lot of them are, this isn't all bad news, 58% of the world are doing a lot. We're not, but 58% of the world are. <clears throat> and my aim is to get us doing something. Um, when I say to them, if you do nothing, just look at the, let's take an average of 50%. <clears throat> the mathematics is relatively simple. It's like a decay curve, a nuclear decay curve. In one generation of exposed children, let's say 20 years, a half of your newborns are going to have some sort of defect if they are alive. Another 20 years, we are down to a quarter. Another 20 years, you are down to an eighth. So in 60 years, I say to them, and this isn't my work, this is the work of proper, real professionals doing this job. <clears throat> In 60 years, only one in eight of your children can be born or expected to be born healthy. How are you going to run your infrastructure? How are you going to run your health service? Who's going to pay for it? Where are the taxes coming from? Who's going to man the factories? Where are they coming from? The only answer to this is mass immigration. That is the only answer, if you wish to survive as a country. <clears throat> and I will be, I'm coming on to trees and animals later. Um, I'm coming on to trees and animals later. But it's worth mentioning here while I think about it, <clears throat> the scientists will know this, but we all have the same four chemical bases in our DNA. Any tree can read your DNA sequence. The nucleotides won't do it any good because it doesn't interest a tree because the tree doesn't do what we do. But any tree can read your DNA sequence. And anything that damages our DNA. And if there are any professionals here who would like to know the sequence through the cell, I'll happily give it to you. Anything that will, ham it, that, that will damage our DNA will damage all other living species' DNA, all of them, plants and animals. And the figures are showing this. And as far as I know, there are only three living things on the planet that seem impervious to microwaves. Um, there are, as I said, 48 papers on childhood suicide, which manifests itself quite a lot uh, with cell phones. There are as many papers on breast cancer, and I can't go into the breast cancer now, it is a mammoth topic, but I can do questions. I have a picture here which I won't show, 
but you're welcome to come and have a look if you wish, um, of a, a lady who tucked the cell phone into her bra. Uh, but breast cancer is a phenomenally high rate among people who uh, carry cell phones in their handbags or have the metal stays in the bra. And finally on this little section, a surgeon from Plymouth, a brain surgeon, <coughs> questioned why the amount of brain tumours he was seeing did not match the, the amount he was doing, the operations he was carrying out. I need my glasses. <coughs> And the answer, if I can find it, <clears throat> here we are. <clears throat> the brain surgeon challenged the statistics. And we looked into this. <clears throat> I, I had a letter from him and, and I wrote to him. And I sent him a copy of this. <clears throat> and our statistical office, office of statistics, whatever it is, they take, or they did then, and, and it's, as far as I know it's still going, they are taking 40,000 brain tumours off the statistics every single year. 40,000. And it is justified, what they are saying is, Aha! The endocrine glands in the brain are not actually grey or white matter. We associate the brain with grey or white matter. Therefore, they're not really brain. Therefore, the tumours of the endocrine glands are not brain. So we can take those. So we take off the 40,000 endocrine cancers a year. And this is how it goes on. And this is how you get your... Um, this is how you get your figures down. <clears throat> but I did say to the doctor, surgeon, you work for the NHS. If you try and raise this, I have known two area health authority, whatever the chief person is called, the chief of the area health authority, I have known one be threatened that she would lose her job in one half of one day if she brought this to anybody's attention and the other one uh, that the best thing he could do was keep quiet and stick to other things. <clears throat> now, we put Wi-Fi in schools. Uh, we put Wi-Fi in schools you can go into virtually any state primary school and they will have 20 Wi-Fi's in the class, plus the routers on the ceiling, plus a transmitter, and there will probably be iPads as well. <clears throat> and they are all microwaves. <clears throat> what you are not told, and if you are a school governor or a decision maker, <clears throat> what you are not told when you put these in front of our five-year-olds or even four-year-olds these days, what you are not told <clears throat> is that the Wi-Fi in your classroom or your children's or grandchildren's classroom or their bedroom, the Wi-Fi is in the same category for danger. The World Health Organization International Agency for Research on Cancer. They are in the same category, exactly the same, as mercury, lead, DDT, benzene, which is the smell from petrol you get, exhaust fumes from cars, HIV type 2 and chloroform, the same. 
Now, if I walked into anybody's school with any of those and said, here you are, play with this for a day, I would be jailed, certified, sectioned, and jailed. And yet, we've got children with these on their laps. Uh, I think somebody worked out for 13 hours over a school lifetime or something. <clears throat> but the good news, <clears throat> the International Commission, International Commission for Non-Ionising Radiation Protection, they have been a very, very tightly guarded body, secretive. <clears throat> you can't join them, you have to be invited to join them. <clears throat> They don't answer to anybody, they are not elected, <clears throat> and they have been a very, very toast, close community. But just Saturday, they are based in Germany, on Saturday we have a defector. And with 5G coming, he is not prepared to do what they are doing or be a member of their gang anymore <clears throat> and this arrived from Germany on Saturday for me <clears throat> and he has said and he has gone public there are now two large well executed and solid studies that point in the same direction cancer from exposure from all of these technologies. The data, is large, the data in the large study which found clear correlation between exposure to mobile radiation and cancer rates shows even greater cancer risks than revealed in the first report. Therefore, World Health Organization hazard class one instead of today's class two, which is the one I've just read. <clears throat> it, is an air, it is an airtight argumented conclusion which supports an overwhelming amount of research. He is asking the world to upgrade the cancer certification from grade two, which is mercury and lead and benzene, up to grade one. He said the research substantiates that. <clears throat> now, I'm going to finish off for 10 minutes, then we stop for a, a break. I'm going to just finish off with uh, a few bits on Wi-Fi, because I, I think this is important, because these are our children and grandchildren. <clears throat> <clears throat> Here we are. <clears throat> right, I'm just going to run over a few things. Um, I am not alone in running around the world uh, um, trying to do this. I, I have, there are a lot of people doing lots of things and we'll have some good news here. Um, the industry themselves, come on Barry, sort yourself out. <clears throat> the industry themselves in, 2000, in the year 2000 studied the top 220 research articles and said that what they are putting out actually does cause cancer. The Council of Europe, 47 countries, 800 million people. Same simple statement, ban Wi-Fi in schools. Dr. Annie Sasko, 22 years World Health, World Health Organization Cancer Department. <clears throat> Mobiles, cell phones, and Wi-Fi will cause cancer. <clears throat> so, 
Switzerland, France, Germany, Belgium, England, this is not the state schools, England have started to remove Wi-Fi from schools. UNICEF, the big children's charity who care for children, decided to look into this and they did their own study, nobody interfered, and they came up with their own conclusion. They found there was an 85% risk of brain and heart damage. And in fact, in Canada, I think it is, in the schools, they've had heart attacks from children from Wi-Fi, and now the classrooms have defibrillators in. 85% um, brain and heart damage, 36% epilepsy, 11% neurological harm, 82% blood, immune and fetal damage. <clears throat> Iceland, Cyprus, Italy, Canada, Russia, USA are either removing or starting to remove Wi-Fi from schools. Okay. Uh, finally, on this, <clears throat> um, just two things. Um, I think this lady, uh, internationally, she is renowned for being particularly clever. And I'd like to read just what she wrote here. <clears throat> uh, she is a paediatric neurologist, um, Dr. Maya Klein, Klein, and she has said... <clears throat> Pregnant women deserve to know that wireless radiation can have an impact on the developing brain. We're seeing alarming increases in the number of children diagnosed with neurological disorders over the past decade. <clears throat> and finally here, um, I've got an article here. I, I won't take it out and show it to you. It's a, a very large article published uh, in a science journal and <clears throat> because he was so worried and with no disrespect to some of the people here and I know some of the people here because I, I know them are recognised nationally and internationally for their knowledge. Uh, with no disrespect to the people here um, Professor Yuri Gogoryov, who is chair of the Russian Federation for Nuclear and Atomic Sciences, and probably the most knowledgeable person on the planet concerning microwaves and harm, <clears throat> he came over here for one specific purpose. He wanted this article published, which it was, and he gave a lecture and he wanted to warn our government, do not put microwaves in schools. Do not put Wi-Fi in schools. Wi-Fi will have severe neurological damage and physical damage to our children. He came all the way over here just to say that and to warn us. And anyone wants to see the article, you can come around my house and, and, and read it and photograph it. <clears throat>